stunning. Um, beautiful, overwhelming. The LA premiere was overwhelming because, in a way, because um, uh, the fire trucks were there. And it was very reminiscent of what I had seen during the funerals, and so it was hard. But after I kind of got myself um, put back together from that, I was fine. Put back together from the red carpets? Or? Yeah, from that experience seeing the red, you know, the fire trucks, the, the ladder trucks with the um, flag hanging down. It was just like what it was for us when we went to the funeral, so it was hard to see it. But not the first time I have seen that since, you know, four years ago, but but it definitely took my breath away. And they were just so honoring, really, is what it boiled down to. Incredibly honoring of our crew. There were a lot of first responders there in LA. Mm -hmm. Firefighters mostly or other? Firefighters mostly, and there were some police officers. And what was interesting about that group of firefighters, um, you saw them in their class A's, but most of those guys had been on hand crews in the past, had been um, hot shots or um, on engines. So that's why they were picked to do that red carpet. Did you see many people that were obviously Wowland firefighters there? Um, no, because they were in their class A's because most of the guys that they wanted to, um, were not available. A lot of the guys were okay. called out in California. fighting fires, yeah. When we're filming this uh, on October 11th, right? Yeah. There's many large fires burning in California right now, including Southern California. There are. I know, and that is so, I haven't even process. I haven't even begun to process that. In the midst of everything that's been going on the last couple of days for us, I haven't even processed that there's been 11 lives. And they, they, they think, only 11, there might be more last lives lost. 15, and that was 15 yep. Probably, maybe maybe more, more now. now. Unbelievable. Your character uh, was a big part of the movie, Only the Brave. Mm -hmm. I can't even imagine how difficult it must have been, well, for me anyway, or the new shoes to kind of relive these tragedies again, you know, four years after the fact again, especially over the last two days and all the build up leading up to this movie. Mm -hmm. How have you handled that? I think that the big thing for me is just to, I have been, I am incredibly grounded. I have a huge life outside of the movie. I have a family and a lot of really good friends, people that, people I connect to very deeply. And I have all of my animals and I have the Eric Marsh Foundation and we have been crazy busy lately. So really most of my focus is on that life as opposed to the movie. The movie is um, beautiful and amazing and I'm so grateful for it. But it's just a part of an already incredible life that I have, that I've created for myself. Mm -hmm. And so the more I muck stalls and brush horses and go to my job and do work for the foundation volunteering, it, it allows all of that other stuff to just be momentary. So what was your involvement with the movie? I mean, I assume they contacted you before they started filming and mm -hmm. gave some advice and that sort of thing. And what else yeah. did you do for them? I shared with them about me and Eric. That was, and about my role. So they, originally my role was very small. And the more they started talking to me um, and discovering more about me with the horses and stuff, my role got bigger because I have a cool job. You do. I do, yeah. And they wanted to, they wanted, the more they started to, to, to get my involvement, the more they started to see that the family aspect of this job is er, extremely valuable. And so without having Eric's wife more present in the movie, they weren't able to show that, that this life is hard on families. And I'm, so I'm very grateful that they did that. So I had a very, I had a large involvement in that. And um, I was on the set a couple times and, you know, just getting um, to know Jennifer a bit, having her get to know me and 
A lot of riding. I did a lot of riding on the set. Riding? Riding, riding horses, yeah. With Jennifer? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and their wranglers and stuff and being involved in that. Just being, just during breaks or was a particular purpose to the riding or like helping yeah. to, to become familiar with I horses? think it was mostly so that Jennifer could see me riding because um, I have my own riding style and so it's way more cowboy than it is anything else and I wanted to make sure that it was um, I wanted to make sure that it wasn't more of an English style because that wouldn't be reminiscent of Eric and I we were Western writers together which is what I still am so I wanted to make sure that was adequately shown in this movie it was important. So did you have much contact with other actors like Josh Brolin or James Badge Steele? Josh and I um, worked a lot together, which was really good. Um, we met a lot. We met here in Prescott. He's been here and we hung out a lot in Prescott together um, and hung out a lot on the set so that he could get to know Eric which was wonderful. I, I gave him Eric. Was that important to him? Absolutely. It was really hugely important to Josh. He became Eric, and without having been able to see his things and to be part of his world in this way, it would have been very difficult for, for him to have really captured the role like he did. So he really did, he is Eric in that movie. You have seen some quotes that from him and including on his Instagram account and he frequently brings up how important the movie was to him and and the, the closeness he felt with the firefighters. Of course mm -hmm. he himself was a volunteer firefighter mm -hmm. some time ago. Where was that? Mesquite, Arizona? Yeah, it was down south, down in southern Arizona. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it seemed like he wears uh, the Granite Mountain uh, shirt frequently whenever he has an opportunity to do it. Yeah, he really honors the crew, which is wonderful. What was, do you have any idea what the reaction about the movie is from the other 18 families? I don't, I don't. I've purposefully not engaged in that really with everybody else because I don't want to speak for them. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, go ahead and speak for them. <laughs> I'm, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. This is what so-and-so said. No, I, I think it's important to get their, their perspectives on it because their, their husbands and sons were as valuable as Eric was and as Brendan was, so I feel like their voice is necessary in this mm -hmm. to come from them. Does that make sense? Of course. Yeah. And your association with horses was a, a part of the movie, mm -hmm. at least Jennifer's association with yes. horses. Yes. I assume was yours too, so tell me about the horses in your life. What, what do you do with them, for them? Um, I am a barefoot natural hoof trimmer. So I work on horses' feet. I remove horseshoes and take horses barefoot to work um, in any number of different um, ways barefoot. So I work on working ranch horses that are um, here in Arizona that are working barefoot now. Took all of them barefoot about eight years ago and they've all been sound and working great on the ranch, rounding up cattle um, with no iron on their feet. And I've worked on barrel horses and pleasure horses and show horses and all kinds of different horses and taken them successfully barefoot. And that's what I do. I transition horses into a life free of steel. So you're wearing a t-shirt that says Eric Marsh Foundation for Wildland Firefighters. Tell me about the foundation. The foundation was started obviously after um, Yarnell happened and it's a love letter to Eric Marsh and to the Granite Mountain Hotshots and it's my way of putting beauty and love into the world that just seems so broken right now. And we raise money for next of kin of wildland firefighters killed in the line of duty. And we also help wildland firefighters who have PTSD from fatalities or near um, fatalities on the fire line. 
And uh, we're going to be opening up uh, more programs fairly soon to help a lot more guys. And we're going to be giving a lot of money out there into the wildland community just to help help ease some of the burden. And um, this foundation is uh, my survival. I started it um, as a way to keep Eric's name very positive and to do good in his name. And it um, and it uh, it just it helps it helps people and it helps me um, I by focusing on something that's giving back instead of just taking I can um, I feel a lot of love and it heals um, it heals pieces of my heart that are still very very broken Good. there's so many different reasons why I think this movie is so important the movie is so valid right now one reason is that in this world where there's so much social media and so much news presence we get inundated with so much negativity and and death really I mean what was going on in Las Vegas and other mass shootings that we've had and this type of movie shows the world that there are men and women in the world who are who are dedicated to their service and who give themselves for others and for our wildlands and that's really vital and it showcases a camaraderie between human beings that that I think is also really important we are a very lonely nation in that we use our social media to connect with people and you see these guys on the fire line who are connected to each other and they become a family and what Eric used to call it was a dysfunctional family the Granite Mountain Hotshots were like his dysfunctional family during the season you know with all of these kids and all of these different types of people doing different things and everybody learning and different emotions and personalities and all of these different very dynamic things that were happening in that environment and and it was his entire life it was his it was his focus and his dream and it was his family and I love that I love that that is showcased um, the other thing I love so much that is showcased is family of these hot shots as well not just my family but it shows Jesse's family and it shows Brendan's family and I think that's really I think that's really important um, because being a family member of a wildland firefighter means that we are at home and we are left to keep everything running so that that firefighter has a normal life. So that I, I had this life and I kept it going for Eric so that when he was in his off season he could ride horses and he could have dogs and he can do all of these things. Without my presence in his life that would have been very difficult. Uh, it would have been difficult to maintain a home for him. It would have been very difficult to do a lot of that stuff because he was gone so much. So the wife um, presence, the spouse, I should say, the spouse presence is very important. And um, I'm so grateful that they chose to showcase that. And it's bigger than me. It's bigger than Amanda Marsh. It's, <clears throat> it's all of us. And that's what... A lot of people I know who are just seeing the movie now are starting to witness and they're starting to say that to me. That's a feedback I'm getting is, wow, I never realized how hard my wife had it. And this show, this showcases how her life is, how it's a struggle for her. And it makes me feel so much more grateful for her because now I can see it. I'm like, yeah, that was, that's my, that was my life. And that is the life of all of these people. It's a sacrifice. It's a sacrifice that we willingly make but it's a sacrifice and Eric used to always say that without the family support it would be impossible for that for a wildland firefighter for a hotshot to be as together as they are because we give them that we are that we're the, we're the safe landing after the after the role is over and um, I know a lot of hotshot wives and they they're tough mamas and they work hard and they raise their families and it's a big deal it's a very big deal. So I think it's valid and important that that is showcased. And if you take my name out of it and you take the horses off of it, 
you will see every single hotshot spouse right there. That is them. And um, so I'm grateful that they chose to show that. And um, me, I am completely as normal as everyone else. I just have been through something that is shocking and gripping and incredibly sad and a lot to move through. And um, I'm now part of this incredible movie and I know people that I would not know had this event not happened. But there is no one in the Grand Mountain Hotshot families that would ever say that they want all of this over that. Like, we, we miss that life, all of us do. And, um, and we miss the presence of those men in our lives. And that's really important to say. And um, somebody texted me or somebody messaged me and they said that they were envious of me. And I'm like, man, don't be envious. This life might look in pictures like it's cool, but this life is actually pretty hard. There's nothing easy about being the widow of Eric Marsh. It's hard. And I would tell people that you need to go home and love on your families and kiss your kids and be present with them and be with your husband and your wife and just call your parents and tell them you love them and take extra time with them because once it's over, it's over and there's not a do-over. So don't let, don't let anything stop you from loving. That's the biggest takeaway, I think, from my experiences in my life is always love. That's it. It's a very hard home life. So everything that you do, uh, everything that you have is, is expressed and done in the winter. So that's why we were ice climbers instead of rock climbers, was because we could go and have a nice, we were rock climbers too, but, but we would spend time ice climbing because we could do that in the winter. And it was a sport that we both enjoyed and we could do that in the winter. And, um, but aside from that, it's, it's extremely hard. I mean, these guys come home after these really long, hard roles to, like, as you said, 14 to 16 days, sometimes extending three to four weeks. Bear jaw was gone. Bear jaw was gone um, for, uh, I think, 73 out of 78 days. I mean, it was insane. This fire season has been crazy. So, um, it's very difficult for the people left at home and when these guys come home they sleep you know they sleep or they sit on the couch and eat Ben and that's what Eric did he sat and ate Ben and Jerry's and slept and watched Family Guy reruns and and did nothing for two days and then he'd get up and and do all of his laundry and pack all of his clothes and get ready to leave again and it's not just when they're gone that's hard but it's also when they're home and on call because you don't know if they're going to be home for birthdays. You can't make a plan for them for dinner. You can't know, you don't know if you're going to have breakfast together. So you, you end up, it's stressful. It's very stressful. And I had my own business and I couldn't just not participate in that life when Eric would come home because I had a job and a career that I was building. And so it was difficult. It was, it was difficult. The winters were great. He would shut it off as soon as, you know, September 29th rolled around. That was usually their last day. That's Eric's birthday. And, um, and they would call the end of the season. And that was a beautiful day. <laughs> so, Amanda, tell me about Eric and horses. Eric grew up in North Carolina near his uncle's farm. And his uncle had horses. And Eric and his cousin would sneak over there and ride those horses bareback all the time. Um, and he, so he loved horses, absolutely loved horses, and spent a, a lot of time with them, but lost that connection for a long time until he met me and we embarked on a horse journey together. And Eric, Eric's horse is named Shorty. We still own him, he's 26. And he was um, the love, one of the loves of Eric's life. Uh, he absolutely loved this horse. And Eric 
rode Shorty. Me and Eric would go on rides. He rode Shorty all over this county. I mean, they rode everywhere together. And it really was, his relationship with Shorty was cool because it, it opened Eric. It made him focus on something other than fighting fire and other than um, the stresses of um, the Granite Mountain Hotshot program with the city of Prescott, because there was a lot of stress there. And it helped Eric to have Shorty in his life to just ride and work with, and he just, he loved him so much. And he did a lot of um, working with colts and stuff because I had horses at the barn, um, our barn, that I would train for other people and work with. And so Eric, he, um, he did a lot of that with me, actually. And he was really incredible. He could get horses just to do anything that he wanted them to do with very little effort. Shifting gears here. Several years ago, you were in a series of vehicle accidents. Mm-hmm. Tell me about it. Uh, I was driving um, uh, for work. Um, I had been um, at a friend's house, and I was working there. And when I left that house, I was extremely tired. And I didn't give myself a break, which I should have done. Back then I was a workaholic, I worked all the time, and it was my focus in life, especially in the summers when Eric was gone, and I didn't give any, myself any self-care at all, I wasn't sleeping well, and um, I was on my way to another job, and I flipped my truck, Eric's truck, Stella, <laughs> his gray Toyota that he was just lending me. And I flipped that truck. I hit the guardrail and flipped it. And um, I could have died very easily. Right before I flipped that truck, the window of the pat or the driver's side window was down, and my arm had been hanging out. And I could feel myself nodding off, but I thought that I was invincible and that nothing could happen to me. And I had just rolled the window up and blasted the air conditioner and turned up the music, and boom, I was asleep. And I remember. The first thing I remember is waking up and hearing the screeching sound of that truck as it was sliding across the asphalt of the road. It was terrifying. And I ended up cutting myself out of the seatbelt and pulling myself out of the passenger side window, which was still down. And if I had not rolled that window up, of the driver's side and my arm had still been hanging out. I could have been trapped underneath that truck. I could have died very easily. Me dying in that accident was, it, it was a very real scenario. And I ended up with some minor, minor, minor injuries. And I'm still able, able to give a, a hoof clinic. Um, actually, I gave a hoof clinic three days later with a horse. <laughs> And that's when Eric showed up from a fire, and he was very upset um, that I could have died in that accident, that he could have lost me, and it was pretty gnarly. And I've never had another situation like that. I stop now when I'm tired, and I'll actually pull into a gas station and sleep in my car or my truck for an hour or so before I continue. Did you have a knife in your pocket? Is that how you cut the seatbelt? No, there was uh, two semi-trucks that stopped behind me. And um, they were walking around the outside of the truck. And I was, I, I was panicking because I was kind of caught in the truck. And so I screamed at them to help me and give me a, I screamed at them, give me a knife. They handed me this huge knife. It was overkill for sure. This, uh, the blade was like this long. And um, cut, my, cut myself out of that seatbelt and pulled myself out. But that's just another another thing that they asked me, who who do you want us to call? <laughs> no one. There's no one to call. My parents were not living here, and Eric was on a fire a long ways away. So there was nothing that anybody could do for me. So my friends took me home, and I was fine. Thank God. It's not a way that I would suggest other people do it, but in my case, I was. it turned out fine. But the truck was, the truck remained 
um, between my house and my barn for three years as a um, Eric wouldn't move it. It was a he wanted it to be a reminder of what would happen if I did that again. Was the truck totaled? It was absolutely totaled. Dead. Dead. And it was very sad because that was a very cool truck. And we had a lot of great memories in that truck. Our first date was in that truck. So Stella. today is a crappy publication. <laughs> Do not participate in any of their online forums. <laughs> what? <laughs> Wildfire today is an amazing publication. <laughs> uh, that, that will keep you down, I'm sure, but... Uh... <laughs>